Hi, this is Dan Russell, and welcome to this special episode of Search Research. So if you remember from last week, our challenge was, what's that logo? And it was prompted by this holiday card done by Mark Reiner, which is basically a composition of a bunch of different logos. You might call this kind of a logo rebus. Now, I know some of these. So, for example, I know that A right there is, is the Amazon logo, but uh, I'm not sure about these others. I can kind of guess. Oh, there's Yahoo. I know that. Okay, so what are the others? So, the first thing I did to get going here is I opened up this picture, this image, in a new tab just by control clicking on it and say open link in new tab, or so open, open image in new tab. And now you can see we've got the whole thing here, and I save that to my desktop, which is over here. And obviously, I'm going to have to sub-image this. I'm going to have to crop down this bigger picture down into its constituent pieces so I can search for each logo by using search by image, right? But there are a lot here. So what I'm going to use instead of Google image search, at least to start, is I'm going to use Bing's image search because it already has a tool built in to automatically do sub-imaging, or at least under user control. Let me show you this. When you go to bing.com, you can click on images here, like that. And what I'm going to do is search for, by clicking on the camera icon, click, I'm going to search for this entire image. So here like this. Now we know this probably won't work because I doubt that this is actually in the public domain. Sure, if you look over here on the right, you see lots and lots of different images, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for are each of the logos, okay? So remember, remember, we talked about this before. If you click down here in visual search, click, this allows me to then use this little framing widget like that and I can start to search for just the sub piece. I don't have to go out and create all new examples and create all new sub images. I can just sub image it automatically using this tool. This is great. So here we can see the H is, well, it doesn't take long to figure out it's the history channel. We got it there. Of course you want to double check all of these things, but I happen to know that that's also, that is the history channel. So what about this uh, A thing? Let's see if we can't check that. A, yep, guess what? That's Amazon. No surprise there. How about this thing? So you see, I'm just dragging the frame. With that, it's pretty fast to show that that's Pinterest. Got that. But what about this P? Huh. Lots of beautiful line drawings and things that are close, like this R, but that's not the same as this P here. I'm going to scroll through here and see if I can't find it. I see lots of lovely script characters, but I'm not finding it. Let's hang on to P. We'll come back to P. Okay, so what about this Y? I feel like I should know that. Oh, of course, it's the Yale logo. Got it. Okay, green H. Aha, it's the Holiday Inn logo. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just moving this a little framing widget and checking out each of these one by one. What about this O? You know, this is not going to work either. There are lots of O's here, but it's not working. So we got to find the Y, the P, and the O. How about L? Mm, mm. The problem here is L is pretty common. In this kind of blobby shape, it's indistinct if that's actually an L, which I think it's an L. But I'm going to frame it in a little tighter and see if I can figure it out. So notice that the results are a little sensitive to the framing of the little widget here. So if I move it around a little bit, maybe I can figure it out. Not having any luck. So let's go on to the next one. We'll come back to L. How about this yellow rectangle thing? The problem with a yellow rectangle logo like this is it's beautiful, elegant logo, but there are too many yellow rectangle things out there in the world. Lace images, different kinds of vodka, pin board. Wait, wait, what is that? National Geographic. Oh, interesting. So National Geographic, I bet, has a yellow rectangle. We'll check this in a second. We'll come back to this. But we think right now it's National Geographic. 
How about this capital D, swash D? Uh, again, not much of anything here. A, now I can imagine what the problem is going to be with this A, which is, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. There are a lot of A's. So it's difficult to get an exact match here. Or rather, it's easy to get the exact match. It's difficult to be very specific about which. Is this the Glyphobat Font Foundry, or is it for some other site? Now, this one I already know ahead of time. This is the Yahoo Y. But using this tool, yes, there it worked. Beautiful. Now we got Y for Yahoo. What about this S? Like the yellow rectangle, I worry that this is going to be pretty generic. And I'm just creeping in here little bit by little bit. Hmm. Not working out. So we've got a few letters here that we don't quite know. We don't know the P, the script P. We're a little uncertain about uh, the A and this S. So let's go into more detail in each of these. So what I'm going to do is switch my strategy. What I'm actually going to do is crop the image just to those. So I've already done that, and let me grab those images. So here, through the magic of video editing, I basically made all these logos appear. So I've cropped them from the master photo. And what I'm going to do now is go to, so I'm going to go to images.google.com, and I'm going to drag in the script P here like this. So did you know you can do that? You can drag images from desktop or upload them as you wish. And, oh, this works beautifully. So here is very clearly the Philip Lim logo. We even have a knowledge panel on the right-hand side about this guy. Fantastic. Let's try yellow rectangle as National Geographic. What about the other ones? Let's try this S swashy logo thing here with the arrow on it. Got a bunch of stuff here. It's not working out too well. What do we have to do? Let's try changing that to logo. Does that help? No, that does not help. Um, logo arrow S. Did that help? Click on visually similar images. And I'm just going to start scrolling through here. Oh, wait, wait. I noticed something interesting here. See that yellow arrow? points out that Subway has a new logo. Maybe we should check this out. I recognize this because that yellow arrow looks surprisingly like this yellow arrow on the logo itself. So I'm going to click on that, thinking that maybe it's the Subway logo. How oh, interesting. So we can go read this article. Aha, that is exactly it. So we found it here by amending the query in Google search by adding the words logo arrow s that is describing it and then following a lead that we found down here and we discovered subway has a new logo and that's it all right let's go back to Google images and we've got a couple more here how about that O? that was a particularly odd thing O with it looks like a boat or something at the top Oh, look at this. Here it suggests it's Old Spice. And certainly the logo of Old Spice looks like it. It's got a little ship at the top, same thing, with that particular shape and color of O. So I would say that's probably it. And oh, if we scroll down here, look at visually similar images. Yes, this is clearly it. Okay. So these are all possible, but they're not exactly right. So how can I modify the query here? I'm going to add the word logo because I know I'm searching for a logo. Let's try that. Cat food logo. So again, I'm going to scroll up and this is not looking promising. Oh, wait a second. Look at that. That's exactly the logo we're searching for. Okay. So big lessons learned here. First, sometimes using one tool is not enough. Sometimes it's great to use something like Bing and use the visual search tool to very quickly and efficiently move from thing to thing. So here, just by using the cropping tool, we can start to get very fast, very efficient searches of a sub-image. But that didn't work for everything. 
Sometimes the best approach was just to crop the image into the sub images that make sense, like this one. Use regular Google image search, drag and drop that into there or upload it. And so the point is that we sometimes have to switch tools. We have to, we have to switch methods in order to get to the best possible answer. And lastly, as we saw with the cat logo, sometimes you have to modify the query. In this case, I'm going to search for images, but I have to add the word logo in order to get to the answer that we're actually looking for. Okay, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, let me know in the comments below and we'll do more.